The first thing I would say is thank you very much. Uh, it's an incredible honor to be recognized for what I think is an action that all of us should feel that we have an obligation to pursue, which is the accountability of great powers within our societies. As citizens, uh, we rely on our government to provide us with truthful information about their policies and about their activities. Uh, now, that's not to say that we need to know the names of every terrorist suspect and every police investigation that's occurring, but we need to at least understand the broad outlines of the programs and policies that our governments are pursuing, the powers that they are claiming, and the manner in which these are being used both in our name as a country, as a nation, as a society, and against us at home, in our communities, uh, with the people we love, and with people who threaten us with harm. Now, what I saw when I worked at the National Security Agency, at the Central Intelligence Agency, all across the American intelligence community, were good people trying to do good work in difficult situations. But what was so extraordinarily dangerous was the fact that they all were concerned about the direction in which these programs were headed. But no one was willing to stand up and raise this concern because they feared retaliation. They feared that the government, that, that most senior officials, uh, would retaliate against them, would destroy their lives, would ruin their careers, would put them in jail. And we've seen in the United States these kind of occurrences happen again and again. The case of Thomas Frick, who stood up to reveal extraordinary wiretapping and surveillance abuses in the United States. He was uh, fired, he was prosecuted under the Espionage Act as if he was a spy for providing information to journalists, allegedly, uh, in, in the same way if, as if he had been providing information about covert agents overseas trying to infiltrate terrorist groups. They threatened him with life in prison, with, with decades and decades uh, away from his family. And yet he did it anyway. He did that knowing that there would be retaliation. And ultimately, at the very end, Courts dropped the charges. The case collapsed because the government realized that they had been in the wrong. But we saw that in some other cases, this was not the case. Uh, in, in the case of Chelsea Manning, we had a private who saw uh, instances where U.S. military forces had targeted journalists uh, with weapons of war and killed them and then concealed these deaths, their participation in these acts. Uh, and we're never held to account for it. Whenever an inquiry occurred, uh, Instead of the senior officials who had directed the policies, we saw low-level people punished. And again, any activity they could have done, any statement that they could have made buried. And there, uh, these programs were not corrupted. Now, I discussed this with everybody else in my community, and we all were concerned about these kind of policies. And we said, what can we do? What can we do? And the answer that came back was no matter how we view, how bad the abuse is, no matter whether it is the degradation of our entire constitutional order, whether the laws of our republics were being violated, both at home in the United States or more broadly under the context of international law, the people said this was not a problem. They told me specifically that I shouldn't say anything because the risk to myself personally would be too great. They told me to think about my family. They told me to think about my life. They told me to think about what would happen if I spent the next 30 years in prison. And that's actually surprisingly prophetic. Because when I provided this information back to the American people, when I provided this to the public, to which this information belonged, and which it had been unjustifiably concealed from me, the government charged me as if I were a spy and threatened me with those same 30 years in prison. But ultimately, even though I can't go home, even though I'm still overseas and I'm working day after day, to continue raising awareness about these abuses, about the way our rights have been changed, about the fact that corporations and governments have come together to change the meaning of our rights, to change the boundaries of our liberties, and say the kind of things we can and cannot do without being watched, without being analyzed, without records of our private being stored and analyzed and shared in new ways without our awareness. I don't regret that decision at all, because this was information that we needed to know. As a result, we've seen 
extraordinarily, extraordinary changes across governments, across countries, and more broadly, we have seen opinions change in the public. We've seen people discuss these programs. We've discussed how the freedom to look at books online, to decide what you want to purchase, uh, changes the way you think. It changes the way you feel about freedom and liberty in your society. We realize that companies, corporations, and governments are tracking the movements of our cellular phones. They're tracking the times that we call them, the numbers that we call them, the associations that can be drawn from these. What political party do we belong to? Uh, who are our friends? Who do we love? Are these uh, people that are family members? Are these people that are suspected political radicals? If an individual is deemed political extremist or a radicalizer by the United States government, we've seen programs created entirely in secret, without an authorized law, that allow them to surveil their pornography habits, to try and discredit them, to try to discredit their political beliefs on the basis of their personal private behavior. And we deserve to ask the government, is this truly necessary and proportionate to the threat that we are facing? Because there are times, there are extraordinary instances throughout the history of society where we decide that the level of privacy that the individual citizen enjoys may change in this time or that time. We consent to searches of our luggage at airports. When we uh, exist in times of total war, uh, world wars, we, have, we see increases in surveillance. We see uh, greater scrutiny on the movements of individuals and citizens. But we recognize that these are fundamental restrictions upon basic liberties, basic human rights. And these activities, these responses are restricted for limited periods of time when they are, they are shown to be, at least the public believes them to be, absolutely necessary to the survival of the nation. Terrorism is not such a threat. Terrorism is a real danger. But it is a law enforcement danger. It existed in the last hundred years, long before anyone had ever heard of Osama bin Laden, the Taliban, or Al Qaeda. And yet, even though these actors, even though we see people in Syria, in Iraq, committing terrible atrocities again and again and again, our societies continue. They persist, and that is not a result of the strength of our surveillance. That is a result of the strength of our values the strength of us as a society, the strength of our commitment to stand up and work together every day to build a better world and to not be afraid of distant threats and distant actors who may wish us harm. Because we recognize that if we burn down our society to prevent some danger, if we limit our rights and stand against the values that have made us strong, we have not saved the nation. We have acted against it. We have destroyed it. The way we protect ourselves, the way we protect the people around us, the way we protect the future, not just for us, but for those who come after us, is to stand beside our rights and to say that these belong not to me. These belong not to you. They belong to us. They belong to the world. They belong to the human body. And if we are to live in a liberal society, we must stand and defend liberal values. And that means not just sin against frightening people far away, people who don't look like us, people who don't speak like us, but defending these rights, defending these values against even the most senior officials in our government and demanding that if they change our laws, demanding if they impose secret rules, demanding if they impose secret uh, programming, and they are contrary to our values, that these will one day become known to the public, and we will hold them to account for the decisions that they have made. Without this, we cannot exist as not just a society, but as a community. Government and democracy are founded on trust. And that's going to require not just all of us working together broadly as a public, but that's going to require agitators. That's going to require instigators. That's going to require activists around the world who stand up and say, I believe that this is wrong. And I'm not just going to say this is wrong. I'm not just going to write a newspaper article about it. I am going to stand up against it and say that I will do whatever I can to ensure that the same rights that I myself inherited 
who belong to my children and the society to which they belong. Thank you. Thank you very much.